There's been a slow decline over the years uh, in morality here yeah. in this country. And things that years ago, say in the 20s, 30s, 40s, mm. that were held sacred and, and that we honored are now being trampled on. And the things that years ago that were absolutely would be uh, described as uh, depravity or um, sexually immoral, that, uh, they're celebrated now yeah. in current yeah. culture. Yeah. Um, so we, we've come a long way from our morals. And who was it that said that the only way, the only way this constitution, the only way this constitutional republic John Adams. works is yeah. with a moral people. Yeah, moral and religious people. However, I mean, they kind of go hand in hand, right? But, you know, th that's just it. You know, it doesn't matter what you write down on paper, right? We always say the Constitution, the Constitution, especially me. I always talk about the Constitution. Well, it's just words on paper, right, unless you abide by it, you know. And, and even the freedom of speech, as Alan Zabrowski said, was our, our greatest uh, weakness as it was our greatest strength, right? Right. Because if you don't have a moral people, then it's taken advantage of. You know, whenever whenever these cultural Marxists came over to our shores because they were, you know, uh, they were ex expelled from uh, certain places in Europe, you know, they would teach something called critical theory. You've heard of critical theory. Critical race theory is just one example CTR, of that. Yeah. They called it critical CRT. theory. They would criticize everything that was moral uh, and degenerate or, or anything that was moral, good, and righteous. They would completely try and break down to sort of destroy the society because these cultural Marxists knew that Marxism could not take effect um, through violent means in the world, right? You can't just take over the whole world. Like the Soviet Union came close. They took over a lot of countries. Those Marxists did that, but they weren't able to take over all of Europe or anywhere else. So they figured they would overthrow these um, states and republics and democracies by using this cultural Marxism, by destroying the culture with, with, from within. You know, a lot of these cultural Marxists, you can look it up, but a lot of these guys came from what was called the Frankfurt School. The Frankfurt School of Learning from Frankfurt, Germany. You know, a lot of these guys like uh, Herbert Marcuse, he worked for the OSS, which is the precursor to the CIA. And, you know, one of the famous uh, um, cultural Marxists. Another one, Max Horkheimer, came over in the 60s. Another one was Theodore Adorno, Eric Fromm. Um, uh, I'm, I'm catching um, a pattern here yeah, uh, um, on this. There's a bunch of them. Oh, oh George Lukacs. Um <clears throat> And well, another one that was uh, really popular was uh, um, uh, Gromsky, Antonio Gromsky. Now, Gromsky was Italian, uh, so he doesn't count with the bell. But uh, <laughs> there, there's many others. Sigmund Freud, he was another one who would teach, like, through uh, psychology and psychiatry, taught immorality and taught, he even told his clients to, like, cheat on their wives and do whatever, whatever their sexual desires required. Go ahead and do it's okay. And, of course, uh, his nephew was known as the uh, grandfather of modern propaganda, and his name was Edward Bernays. He actually has a book called Propaganda, literally called Propaganda, and he worked for the U.S. government as well. All these people came over in like a three to four decade period and sort of taught. A lot of these guys taught at, um, uh, um, were professors at uh, colleges. Here uh, in the States. Especially in California, yeah. Go ahead and read up. I'll send you a couple videos on it. I posted them on my um, Instagram page before. Hey, I'm, I just want, I'm going to talk to you like we're just sitting uh, bullshitting, like we're not being filmed here, that we're not doing anything. The question I have is, is there a difference between car cu cultural Marxism and just Marxism? Well, it's Marxism is a, a political ideology to implement. Like, you know, no private property, you know, in, income tax. If you read... Uh, Who Dost started uh, Marxism? <laughs> Karl Marx, also known as Morde uh, um, Moses Mordecai Levy. And, of course, his partner in crime, Frederick Engels. They studied under a guy named uh, Moses Hess. He was a rabbi, known as the communist rabbi, actually. Okay. Um, this was in the 1840s, 1850s. So why yeah. would why would anybody ad adopt that ideology? What, what, what? Well, it wasn't really adopted during Marx's time, right? It was only adopted and put into effect for the first time in Russia whenever they overthrew the Tsar. Who overthrew yeah. the Tsar? The Bolsheviks, led by Leon Trotsky, Vladimir Lenin. 
uh, Joseph Stalin. He was from Georgia. Um, but then you had guys like uh, Lazar Kaganovich, um, uh, Litnikov, Zinoviev, Radic, um, all leading Bolsheviks. 90% of the Bolsheviks were. Yeah. And um, why, is that, why is that? They were funded and financed with $20 million in gold from Kunlo Bank out of New York City. That's where Lee Bromstein, also known as Leon Trotsky, came from. And who funded them was, um, from Kunlo Bank, was uh, Jacob Schiff and Max Warburg. You're getting a lot of use out of the belt today. This yeah. is good. Uh, a really good book to buy if anybody wants to study up on the uh, Bolshevik Revolution is uh, by Juralina. It's called uh, Under the Sign of the Scorpion. <clears throat> Very in-depth, detailed analysis of uh, that whole uh, that whole uh, time period and era, what led up to the Bolshevik Revolution. All right, let me finish this story here with the uh, satanic statue in yep. Iowa. All right, Polk County prosecutors have charged Cassidy with a more serious offense. Uh, the Des Moines uh, Register reported a document made public Tuesday charged him with felony third-degree criminal mischief. It alleges the act was committed in violation of individual rights. Evidence shows that the defendant made statements to law enforcement and the public indicating he destroyed the property because of the victims, calling them victims, uh, victims' religion. Lynn Hicks, a spokesman for the Polk County Attorney's Office, said in a statement. Um, Cassidy is scheduled for uh, arraignment here February 15th, which is next Thursday, I believe. 15th. Yeah. Uh, he raised more than $84,000 for his defense from nearly 2,000 supporters, uh, according to the fundraising site Give, Send, Go. Not using GoFundMe on that one. Um, founded in 2013, the Salem, Massachusetts based Satanic Temple mm. says it doesn't believe in Satan, but <laughs> describes itself as a non theistic religious organization that advocates for secularism. It is separate from the Church of Satan, which was founded in 1960. Now, so why do they have a statue of Baphomet if they don't believe in Baphomet? Yeah. Uh, what's the argument you can make for their side of things? In what aspect? Are they allowed to? Were they allowed to have that statue there? Are Anybody allowed is allowed to do whatever they want to, unless they're physically stopped. Doesn't matter what it is. Constitutionally. Speaking. Constitutionally, on public property, it's up to the people. Right, it's up to the people of Iowa whether or not they want it or not, and um, I'm not sure if this uh, ex Mississippi congressman was a um, resident of Iowa, but if he was, he felt that uh, it shouldn't be on public property, uh, and Satanism is bad. That's what he feels, and he tore it down. You know, he tore it down. I mean, uh, again, if somebody put up a swastika flag. They have the right to do that. It's constitutional. Do sure. you think anybody would rip it down? And if they did, you think they'd be charged? Uh, they probably would rip it down. And uh, they probably would not be charged. That's correct. The media would probably celebrate it. Right, right. But it also, too, uh, years but, ago... But fucking on the Senate floor is not being charged. You, you would think that... That gets that's allowed on public property. After all the January 6th stuff, yeah, you would think uh, because they made such a, uh, a fuss about that. Yeah, the media and everything that you would hold those like grounds there. Yeah, in the Senate as something sacred, not to do that stuff. Right? It is. There's history. No, I, I yeah, but I think tradition I, there. I, I think in today's culture, I, I I believe that's appropriate. I believe that that is a direct representation of not only our government but the country as a whole. A bunch of fucking faggots. <laughs> That's it, huh? No, and really, you haven't heard anybody on in the right, I'm talking uh, politicians, elected officials, mm. really say too much about it. I haven't looked. I don't, I don't know. There's, but uh, nothing yeah. in, the, in the mainstream. Yeah. Well, they don't want to be called a homophobe. That might hurt their chances of election. Yeah. Re-election Re or whatever. Well, dude, but, do you think this gentleman was in the right for doing what he did? Uh, morally, yeah, yeah, I agree. And okay. I mean, even, I mean, uh, you know, I wouldn't charge him. It'd be like anything. Okay, you, you, you destroyed that guy's property. You got to pay him. Well, well, right. right. Some sort of restitution right. or something like that for Techn but property it's, it's, damage. It, well, it's personal property displayed on public oh. property, right? So you have private property that was used as a display on public property. What would you do? If I was what? So you're walking by uh, 
the county building or mm. uh, uh, the federal building downtown, and yeah. somebody has a statue of Baphomet on the sidewalk. Yeah, w- would you would you do the same? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, what I would actually do is get a group of people, a large group of people, to go down there and do it in a large large number. And I would bring firearms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the <laughs> again. That's I'm an extremist. So that's what I would do. All right. Well, uh, w- w- and I would. I would. I think they need to bring back dueling, Scotty Sievers. I think you should be able to challenge them. You want this up? I want it down. Challenge. Oh, I, I want to fight you. Whoever wins the fight, that's who gets to decide. Right? Would you agree with that? Well, there is. There are like mutual combat type mm-hmm. laws where. I, th- I think so. I think it's like it's only sanctioned for fighting like that. But they used dueling used to be illegal. Aaron Burr, and Aaron Burr, and Hamilton. Hamilton was a piece of garbage. Though. I'm glad Aaron Burr won. But, um, <laughs> but I think they got rid of that in like the 19 early 1900s. No more dueling was allowed. I don't think. I think it's in the Japanese uh, parliament, or maybe even uh, South Korea. We see them. They go uh, at it. They go fisticuffs. They go fisticuffs. You see arguments. Could you imagine seeing like? Ted Cruz and like Richard Blumenthal, like getting in a, a scrap on the Senate floor over something. Yeah, m- most of those guys aren't even in shape. No, they aren't. I wonder if Dan Crenshaw would even put up a fight. He put, he's missing an eye. Plus, he's a. He's do you a know cuck. how small he is? He's a small guy. Dan Crenshaw? Crenshaw? I thought like, he was like six foot nah, tall. Nah, dude, he's like five eight, five nine. I, and let me fact check that real quick. Uh, let me make sure that I got that right. But I think I'm right on this one. Crenshaw's. You know, yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. Go regardless of, 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 of the fact, <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's too many really tough guys in the sound. I mean, you might have your ex-military guys um, that might be in shape, like Crenshaw. I don't know. I don't know if Crenshaw's in shape or not. I have no idea. How about Jim Jordan? Jim Jordan used to wrestle. He's he's a uh, he's got some cauliflower ear. I bet he's uh... cauliflower. It's because you know I, I don't know why he got cauliflower ear. Mike wrestling. Tyson bite him up from wrestling. wrestling. Yeah, constantly getting smacked around. <laughs> you, you're not a fan of Jim Jordan. I'm not a fan of any of them. There's not even uh, Thomas Massey. You like him? He's good, but, but again, he, you listen to me. He's one of the good guys, but still, he doesn't promote the necessary endeavors that need to take place in order for this country to get back to where it was. He endorsed uh, Ron DeSantis. Yeah. He should he should endorse the uh, Second Amendment. If a politician came up and said, you know what, citizens, there's no one to vote for, Second Amendment, second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence, that's what I endorse, I would vote for that guy. They don't exist, though. So Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, where's John Burke? <laughs> well, he should be uh, coming in here any, any minute here. But whether he uh, shows up later, doesn't show up at all, the show goes on. I, I enjoy talking with uh, you Anyways, here, but yep. the uh, real clear politic betting average here uh, we have for president Trump is a 43.7% favorite, Biden's at 32.8%, and Obama, Michelle Obama's at uh, 8.2%. Right. The, there's all those rumors out there that the switch could be in. Where here come the, uh, yeah. the DNC convention. Yeah. All of a sudden, Tooth Fairy, Santa Claus, the no, Man. Nothing's going to change. Never does. But what about the border? What's going on at the border, Scotty Sievers? We can talk about the border. Uh, Biden's still a favorite in, uh, for the betting average and uh, for the Democrats. Obama has now gone above. Gavin, Gavin Newsom for a while was right there at 12, 13, 14, 15%. Trump, 86.5% favorite to win the Republican nomination. And Haley is still hanging on with about 7.5%. A lot of money came in on her, a big Republican donors. There's a rumor out there that Trump is considering her for a VP. Which would be awful. I mean, it w- I know it doesn't matter to you, but that would be a clear sign to me that it's, it's like, all right, Trump still has to kowtow and bend the knee to the GOP and the establishment and give them. I think that's what I think P- Pence was. I think Reince Priebus came in and said, hey, look, we're going to, the, the, the Republican Party is going to come in, we're going to back you and help you and fund you in this race against Hillary, where, Hillary Clinton. Where did they get their money? But, the Republicans, it's all funded by the same people. It's like both sides are funded by the same people. It's horrible. Horrible. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter who you put in there. It doesn't. All right, the border. Mm-hmm. What we got going on here with uh, Governor Abbott. Yep. And Razor I, wire. 20-plus states have all right. pledged their 
Uh, National Guard. Yes. Yeah. And that's assistance good. to the board. That's a good sign. But so the, what are they doing down there? Well, they put up the razor wire, mm. but then the Supreme Court came in and oh. voted five to four. Uh, along one of them who voted five to four for them to take it down was a Trump appointed uh, Supreme Court Justice mm. Amy Coney Barrett. Good pick, Trump. God, I mean, well, it's not his fault. Can't blame him. I kind of liked her when. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you remember some of the hearings where they were like, well, you're just reading off your notes, and she held up the thing, and there was nothing on it. It was like yeah. that. But anyways. Uh-oh. Looks like we might. But, um, yeah, so um, I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't know if um, illegals are still coming in. Of course they're still coming I, in. I don't know if they're just being caught and released. Like, remember Trump did the catch and release, yep. even though his numbers, right? We did the Pew Research, actually yep. worse than Obama's. Um a lot of like, I tell a lot of Republicans that, and they're like, "No, are you kidding me? Oh, Trump is awesome on the border." And I'm like, "Yeah, here's Pew Research. There you go." Oh. Yeah. Um, they're pathetic. These boomer conservatives are just absolutely terrible. Um, but I heard they're putting cardboard underneath the razor wire and just going underneath the cardboard. But are they illegals? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen the videos, but somebody told me that. I don't know if it's true, but it, it makes sense. I mean, cardboard's easy to come by, I would imagine. Where do you think we adopted this uh, mentality? Not when I say we, I, some uh, of the our Americans here that uh, are are almost they they seem to have a heart uh, for these people that are coming in illegally, mm. and they they think it's a good thing. A lot, mostly on the left, no. but even uh, a lot of re Republicans that, that are polled, some of them think it's a, a, okay uh, to come to not come in through a port of entry right. and to just go in where a melting pot and all this other stuff. Why is it that, um, say, Israel, for example, they're allowed to have a border wall, border yeah. security? Yeah. They're also allowed to make sure that everybody in their country mm. is of a certain race ethnicity yes right that's Ethno okay state. and that's okay yeah china china too they will you know i don't i'm sure you're aware of what's going on over there with islam and some muslims over there they put them in, in like internment camps yeah over there and they don't they don't want christianity over there either they want their that's okay for the it's their country it's their they country do what they want they can do what they want yeah. and I, you don't hear anything from uh the mainstream media on the left side or the right saying no. that the, Saying that, oh, they should allow people to come in there. People don't want to go there, to, to be fair. But why is it the United States has to adopt this uh, uh, ideology of multiculturalism? Why is it that they have the United States has to adopt adopt this uh, ideology of the melting pot? Why is it that we have? But we, I mean, shouldn't we be allowed to say who comes in and who doesn't? Right, I, I, I agree, um, and, and we did do that all the way up, I believe, till 1965 with the Heart Seller Act, What's and the Heart Seller Act was basically changing the demographics of who's allowed to come in, and from what countries anyway, and what happened was it, it completely changed not only the demographics, but the entire economic and cultural makeup of the country. Now, I agree with Israel's policy. I agree with that. You should be able to keep it majority whatever you want. Uh, China does the same thing, right? This is why these countries remain diverse. And what I mean by diverse is true diversity. You have the globe. French people, German people, Swedish people, Chinese people, Japanese people, right? You have all these diverse countries. Now, whenever you mix match everybody... There's no more diversity. France is no longer French. Sweden's no longer Swedish. Right. You know, England's no longer English. Under Angela Merkel, Germany accepted, five, I think, 500,000 uh, Syrian refugees. Right. There. And I believe the um, Statue of Liberty, which was given as a gift by some French guy in the uh, 1890s. I, I'm actually, I should know this, and I'm, I don't know it, but, you know... There was a poem written underneath of the statue. Of, Give me your tired, your weak, your you're pathetic, sick, yeah. your poor, your cucks. You know, <laughs> I'm obviously exaggerating that, but it was written by you know um, Emma Lazarus. <laughs> so you know, you 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 have all these things that just say, "Hey, the melting pot," right? And um, I can't remember. There was a play or a book written called "The Melting Pot." 
And if I can't remember the name who wrote it, but if I did remember the name, Scotty Sievers, I wouldn't be ringing the bell. <laughs> I just can't remember the name. But it completely dissolves your national makeup of your country. And I said this before on the Dominic Izzo show last time I was on there. These countries, European countries in America, North American countries, Canada, they're losing their cultural identity. They're losing their makeup. There's no identity. You can't say that American is this or that. You can't say it anymore. Right. You know, and it doesn't have to be 100% ethno state. I mean, even Israel has some sort of Muslim population. However, they keep it a 90 plus percentile Jewish ethno state. Right. China does the same thing. I believe Hungary and Poland are, are very similar. Yeah, pretty strict. Um, either that or they keep that Eastern European uh, uh, Christian. Um, type of immigration policy. Right. And in my opinion, I don't even care about America. If I was in charge, if I was the uh, leader or president or whatever, I mean, I would put into place no immigration, period. End of story. We're done. We're cutting everybody off. Anybody that's here illegally, leave. You're done. We're going to throw you out. You're gone. See you later. Laterville. Yep. You know, you can't, you can't be here. We're, we're too full up. We, we're $33 trillion in debt, $34 trillion in debt. We can't afford anybody else in here. We don't have the work. I mean, other things would have to change on top of that. But for immigration policy, I would cut it off completely. Well, we keep sending money to uh, Ukraine. Wherever, wherever. And, and Israel, right? They're the number one uh, uh, receiver of funds every year them on in, a yearly basis. Them in Egypt. Egypt, Saudi Arabia. Oh, God. All right, let's read this really. Yeah. Uh, so here we are on Spreely TV, coming to you 4 o'clock every Monday. Uh, this is the Burn Pit Podcast. Uh, you're watching us live on Spreely, Spreely Media. It's simple here. We became fed up with woke news, media, woke businesses, woke entertainers, and woke social media platforms. We remember an America that was strong, hospitable to all races and creeds, and people were proud to say they were Americans, a place where we love thy neighbor respected the law, and fought for our rights protected by the U.S. Constitution. Here you can access all of Spreely Media's platform of America First influencers, publishers, businesses, and supporters who all have one common goal, to ensure that freedom does not die during our generation in America. You can download the Freedom Hub app on your smart device, smartphone. It's free. Just go right into the App Store, type in Freedom Hub, and you will see it downloaded. It's free. You can watch our, our uh, podcast here. You can watch guys like Dominic Izzo, Austin Peterson, Doug Billings, Shannon Joy, The Dumb Show. A lot of great content being made here at Spreely TV. Back to this real quick. Yeah. Why is it the multi multiculturalism is being pushed on, it seems, Western Europe uh -huh. and America? Even Canada has a pretty strict border uh, policy. Oh, yeah, I, I am not familiar with their border, but I, they take refugees as well. And I believe it was the New York City mayor, and I forget his name, but the New York City mayor just came out last week and said he is now allocating $53 million in prepaid credit cards for migrant families. You know, again, these people aren't citizens, right? So they're not allowed to be here, you know. Anybody who's here illegally, it is a crime, and if you aid and support these criminals, you are committing a crime. So that being said, no one's doing anything about it. Why? Because we have no government that enforces the law. Supreme law of the land is the Constitution. No one enforces this. No one enforces the U.S. law code. We no longer have a country. It's an oligarchy, and the people in charge do whatever the hell they want. And they take our money through taxation, and quite frankly... They do. They take our money through taxation to support and fund all of this, by the way. And quite frankly, now I know people who work for a paycheck, right? You, your money is stolen from you before you even get your paycheck. You don't have the choice to pay taxes or not pay taxes when it comes to your income if you receive a paycheck. However, all of the employers, all the business owners, big business owners, huge corporation owners, in my opinion... You are completely complicit with the domestic enemies of this country who are committing the crimes, violating the Constitution, and destroying our entire culture and way of life. You are complicit because you are willingly funding them. And if you pay your employees with a paycheck that is uh, done through a payroll company, and the payroll company takes out taxes and gives it to the federal government, state government, through the illegal and constitutional income tax, you are complicit in funding this entire operation of destroying America. 
Where am I wrong, Scotty? You're not wrong. But uh, our our guest uh, got back to me. Uh, um, Peter, I'm going to send you a new email, if you would uh, bring him on. I'm going to shoot it uh, to you, sir. Um, So so that being said, we are complicit by funding everything that we bitch and complain about. We are literally part of the problem. And a lot of people don't see it that way. A lot of people are completely happy with being robbed of their treasure from their paycheck, which, by the way, Scotty Sievers, is a violation of the 13th Amendment, right? Involuntary servitude. I am working, and my my labor is being stolen from me before I even get it in, my, in the form of my pay. It's stolen from me. Yeah, well. So, so we, we are complicit if we allow this, uh, um, go ahead, this current system to uh, continue to steal from our uh, to steal from our, our paychecks, and that being said, it's time that people organize in their communities and refuse to pay this um, money that is being uh, extorted from us. So uh, there's only one way to do that, Scotty Sieverts, and that's by physical force. <laughs> We've talked about this before. It's going to have to start at a local level where counties and yep. local municipalities, you have, and really it starts with the men in those areas. They stand up and they say, really, it should have happened under COVID. It should yes. have happened under COVID. Yeah. All it would have taken was some men to organize. I really, I tried. Guys should have gone I tried door dude. to door asking, "Hey, yeah. do you want to go down?" And we're going to go down to the uh, the county, and we're just going to say, "Hey, we're not putting up with this anymore." Yeah, a show of force, like at the Bundy Ranch, a show of force, saying, "Hey, what, no. I, my business, yeah. you have no business telling me that I have to force my customers to wear a mask. You have no business telling me this." Yeah. And, and no, nobody really did. Not that. only I mean, that, but if you try and force this upon me, I will. I will be retaliating in self defense. And no, I, I tried. I tried. People I were just like, "No, you, we got to vote harder." Yeah, we got to vote harder this I, time. I think people should ask themselves, "What has voting done?" Well, nothing. Over however many years, yeah. what has changed with putting in a different Republican or Democrat? Nothing's changed. In oh. fact, it's gotten uh, it's gotten incredibly worse. When you look at even Clinton gets a lot of credit for the economy because here, uh, when he left, there was a surplus. And we've talked about that too. When he yeah. left, there was a surplus. Um, I don't know how you have a surplus when you're in debt. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. But, but uh, look, Bush rang up the debt. Yeah. In eight years. Yeah. And then Obama said, "Hey, hold my beer." Right. Watch this. Look what I can do. Yeah. And then Trump came along. Trump almost did in four years what Obama did in eight. Now, a lot of that was COVID, right? Well, he still did he it. Still did yeah, it. but yeah, it was COVID. Here are pharmaceutical of- companies that I own stock in. Yeah. Have this free money so my stock goes up. <clears throat> Awful. Awful. But then Biden, too. Who sent the, the whole oh, thing. They, they, yeah, it doesn't matter who it is. They all do it. They all do it. The whole thing uh, with the Ukraine thing bothered Did you see the story today? I, I posted it on my uh, Instagram I story. I did not. You ready? I'll put this on there. You can read it. But new bill gives Ukraine ahead, more yeah. than there you go. New bill gives Corps Ukraine budget. more money than the yeah. U.S. Marine Corps budget. Yeah. Uh, fun fact here: the U.S. Marine Corps budget in fiscal year twenty three was fifty three point eight billion dollars. Mm. This bill would give Ukraine more than sixty billion dollars. That should uh, that should make you sick. If you hear that? Well, here's the deal. They deserve that money if we don't do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you this, and and you agree with me. I go in your house. I go in your house, and I'm I'm a a thief, and I take your wallet off the table and say, I'm going to keep all this money. If you don't stop me, do I not deserve that money? Am I, do I not have a right to? Uh, do I not? Whether I have a right to it or not, I, it's mine unless you stop me. It's a universal. It co- always comes back to that's been a theme in our uh, podcast. The universal law of might is right. Right. Yeah. You don't pay your taxes. What happens, Scotty? Men with guns come to your house and take you away. That's right. Eventually, they've already done it. It leads to it. But the people in jail right now for not paying taxes. <sighs> yeah. Well. 
here as we uh, wait for John to join us. Here he's yeah. coming in right now. Uh, there was a little bit of a miscommunication. Uh, he thought it was 4 o'clock Central. No big deal. But we're going to come in. He's going to come in. We're going to get his take. It's, it's a pleasure to uh, always have uh, the All-American Savage join us. He's, he's uh, been a guest of the show previously. Uh, he's... Uh, very popular on Rumble. This guy yeah. is uh, this guy's very generous with his time. He, he's uh, we consider him a friend of the show. He's, he was really great the last time he was on, and we appreciate his time. I know he's a busy man, uh, but with us today via Zoom is the All American Savage, host of the All American Savage show. He also owns a company called Shell Shock CBD. John Burke, how are you, sir? I'm good. Are you can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, it's a little, a little faint. It's a little faint, but uh, Try we got you. Hey, so I'm so sorry I'm late. I thought it was 4 p.m. CST, and I was I just so happened to check my phone and I saw your message. I am so sorry because I hey. made, I made a special lot and I was like I'm leaving work early so I can come home to do the show because like leaving Dallas to come where I'm at there's like at least two hours of traffic so I was like I'm a DD Mal home so I can do this and not get stuck in traffic <laughs> after. But I am so sorry for being late, guys. I apologize. Hey, no no worries, brother. That's right. We we uh, we understand that. So here. Uh, we talked a little bit about um, uh, the uh, satanic statue that was torn down mm-hmm. in Iowa with a gentleman being charged with a felony there. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that's, we talked about that. I don't know if you want to get your input on, on that or not, but I, I do have uh, some questions here about Ron DeSantis, if uh, uh, I may. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I think the satanic statue, that opens up a lot of very interesting conversation in regards to... Um, not only freedom of religion, but freedom from religion. And I, I think a lot of people get bogged down in this idea of saying, like, look, um, do I support the guy attacking the statue? And the answer to that is yes, but not for the reasons that you think. My reasoning is this. I don't believe any statues should be in these government buildings because I believe in a separation of church and state. I don't want state favoriting any religion. So if it takes people tearing down these statues to finally force the government into a position of saying, look, um, we need to learn really quick that if we don't favor all, then we should favor none. That's the reasoning I take that position. But overall, do I think there should have been allowed a statue to be erected there? No, no, I don't. I think it's it's, it's a government building that's taxpayer funded. I don't necessarily agree with that. What about a nativity scene? I was literally about to say that next. Absolutely not. I do. I think if there's one rule for thee, it's a rule for everybody. Now, if everybody instead wants to vote on this, and I know that's that's such a far fetched idea. But to me, it's just kind of like it's it's the prayer in school equivalent. It's saying either you give the allotment for everybody and you say you have five minutes to do this or you say nobody. So I, I think that that's realistically the only way you're going to keep it fair. And fair is a four letter word. So, yeah, well, there is no separation of church and state in the Constitution. You know that. I know that, but at the same time, when you look at what the forefathers were writing about, you look at examples of why we left the British Empire, why America was even founded in the first place in regards to religious persecution under King Henry. It just It's kind of like the principle of the matter. I mean, it doesn't say in the Second Amendment that there's a ban on magazines. I mean, there was no magazines back then, but it's the principle. Now, I, I also understand in different perspectives of some people saying that we were founded on Judeo-Christian values. You can make that argument. But uh, my counter to that is like, well, then of the Ten Commandments, how many of them are actual law, and should they be enforceable? It's it's a very, it's it's it's, it's a deep topic. It's a deep subject. Okay. Uh, here, uh, want to get your take on uh, January twenty first, two days before New Hampshire primary. Ron DeSantis acknowledged in a video that he posted on social media that he did not have a clear path to victory. Mm-hmm. Um, it, so he dropped out there before New Hampshire after placing second mm-hmm. in. Uh, Iowa, and we talked about this on a previous podcast. Nikki Haley had a very bizarre speech after Iowa, where she was saying it's a two-person race, and we're like, "What? Is she talking?" She, she's like, "You do realize third place is not second place." Like, <laughs> I don't think she realized that. I don't, but maybe you know, she. Like, what do you? Why she do you think she's still in this race? Like, I, I've thought about it. The only thing I can think is that she's really trying to get Trump against the ropes to force her into a VP slot. I don't know why she's still in this race. Yeah, I don't know either. I, that it, uh, it's bizarre to me as well. I think part of me thinks she's just hanging in there to go to South Carolina. South Carolina, I think, is uh, the fourth or fifth state. Super Tuesday is following South Carolina. Mm. Uh, so I think maybe she just wants to win her home state there and then Could be. get I mean, out of it. Is that it. really I mean, going to do anything for her in the long run, though? I mean, No, not at all. But John Kasich yeah. did it in 16. I mean, he was mm. hanging in there until Ohio. Yeah. Uh, Ted Cruz did it until uh, he got to Texas. But 
Um, anyways, um, but uh, I want to get your uh, opinion there. What do you think about his decision to, to drop out at that time right before New Hampshire? Do you think he made the right move? Oh, man, I don't know. I, I was actually kind of shocked by it. Um, when the Iowa votes turn out or when the votes were counted and, you know, it was like almost damn near a 30-point spread, I didn't see it being that close. I, I could have swore it'd be at least 10 points. But 30, it's like, oh, like that, that's hard to come back from, especially in a swing state like Iowa. So then you start going into harder red states. I don't think he's going to do so very well against, you know, Trump has dug in within the GOP. Whether I like it or not, he has a stranglehold on the GOP. So that's, that's realistically what you're up against. So should he have dropped out so soon? Man, that's, I can't tell you what's right or wrong. I, it comes down to the money. Uh, it's, that's, that was his team's decision. I would have liked to seen him stick in, stick it out. Uh, I don't know how well he would have done in New Hampshire. But at least to South Carolina, at minimum South Carolina. But he decided to throw in the towel, and it is what it is, man. Yeah, do you think he made the right decision here running uh, for president this year in 2024? Do you think he should have held off maybe till 28? I think if your intent is that you want the betterment of the country, it doesn't matter when you want to run, then run. I, I don't believe in this idea of, like, waiting your turn. That is the most unconstitutional BS I've ever heard in my entire life because I feel like in a capitalistic market, you know, steel sharp and steel, we need, comp we need competition to get better products. And it's no different in the, in the presidential race. I want to see I want to see better um, better candidates up there. You know, the fact that we're stuck between two geriatrics here is just it's sad. Then you know, I know that Americans out here, I mean, you, you two especially, you know the Constitution, you know what it means, you know what it stands for. Yet, what do we get? We get anti two A, pro Marxist, pro BLM Republicans, and it's got a lot of people fooled. And if you look at how he positions himself, it's very similar to. Um, utilizing the one tactic that unites most people, and that tactic is not love, it's hatred. It's hatred for an opposing people. You saw Hitler utilize the same thing towards hatred of the Jews. You know, it's the Jews, but why we got our nuts cut off at Versailles, all these things. So when Trump, and I'm not making the comparison of Trump to Hitler, I'm not that stupid. Although Glenn Beck did say Trump supporters wore brown shirts before he went full on MAGA, and I can't stand these freaking grifters. I cannot stand Glenn Beck. We're not a fan of uh, Glenn Beck either, sir. Dude, we I can't, you know... It's one thing. Like, if you want to vote for Trump, that's fine. I've got, I'm not against these people. I don't like grifters and I don't like cultists. And Bill Mitchell is another one on Twitter. Like, this, this nerd, he, he invited me on the show and I was like, I don't, I don't want to come on your show. I was like, I think you're just, you're doing it for clicks. You're doing it for engagement. You don't actually have any true core principles or values. You just, you flow with which way the, the political wind is blowing. I don't like that. I don't like the summertime soldiers. If you, or like, I'm a DeSantis supporter. Like, I don't care what people say. I'm still writing in DeSantis, come to president. I'm not voting for Donald Trump. I will not vote for a president that has attacked the Second Amendment, that supported the shutdowns. I won't do it because Biden's done the same thing. So explain to me the difference there. And nobody can. Nobody can. All right. That's good. One, one last question there. Do you think after this uh, 2024 presidential run for DeSantis, do you think he still has a future on the national stage? Or do you think he shot himself in the foot here? No, no, I think he's definitely good. Everybody, everybody loves Florida. Florida is looking for conservative. There are some technical difficulties. No, no problem. Uh, seems like his signal's uh, just a little shaky. No, no big deal. Uh, what uh, I was uh, asking there. Check, check. Can you hear me? So, Yep, yeah, good, we can hear you now. Sorry about that, guys. Um, no, I don't think he shot himself in the foot. There are some things I don't agree with DeSantis on. His his kind of shaky in the beginning of his campaign. Did he support you know sending more money to Ukraine? Then he kind of pulled back a little bit, tried to be more of a centrist. But I think deep down, it's like he's still going to send money to Ukraine. He still wants to do that. Most most squishy Republicans are still on board with that. Um, but do I think he shot himself in the foot? No, I think I think if he wanted to run in twenty twenty eight. Um, I, I would certainly vote for. I think he'd have a much better shot, quite honestly. Um, but the thing that does concern me is, and I don't know how true this is or not. Y'all can speak more to this to your opinions on it. Like Trump Jr. talking about a potential 2028 run. And I was like, I could have swore that we were against dynasties. I, I could have swore that we as Americans don't favor dynasties. We saw the Kennedy dynasty. We saw the Bush dynasty. God forbid there was almost a Clinton dynasty. Thank God there wasn't. So yep. I, I don't know, man. I, I just feel like, did he do himself a disservice? No. I think MAGA uses that as a way to discourage anybody else from challenging the king. Because Trump himself said that DeSantis did have him worried. He, you saw that in his actions. Then at the end of it, he's like, yeah, we were kind of worried, you know, I was a little scared. There. It's like, I know you were scared. You took out $40 million in attack ads. It has a great impression of Trump. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, just... Uh, 
picking your brain on that one, uh, seeing the political strategy there, uh, seeing if, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis has everything <laughs> on his resume that mm. uh, a Republican should want, you know, yeah. he, he, everything, including his resume as a governor. Yeah. But um, the thing that DeSantis right. lacks, man, and I hate to say this, but I think with people like you and myself, uh, you're, you're probably, you're, you're plugged in. You watch this stuff. This is your bread and butter. You actually care. You give a damn about the goings on of our country. I think the common voter does not. The common voter could not even tell you how a bill is introduced. The common voter couldn't even probably tell you how many branches of government we have and what those branches serve for. So the common voter is going to take things at face value. So when I look at someone like Ron DeSantis, is he a nerd? Yeah, he's very nerdy. Yeah, he's very awkward. I got to see one of his debates live. The dude's very awkward. But when it comes to policy, I love the policy. But I think what resonates so much now with our society, we are the Amazon Prime social media society of that we want to see the drama. We want to see the bread and circuses. My God, we're like Rome 2.0 at this point, if you really think about it. Our borders are being invaded by barbarians. Not making the comparison there. I'm not calling Mexicans barbarians. Um, but you look at the, we're in a very similar situation here. And what do the people want? We want, we want our politicians beefing on Twitter. That's what we want. We, we applaud this. We love seeing Lindsey Graham drag up freaking um, Zuckerberg and get an applause moment, yet nothing changes. So I think Americans are very complacent. We're very lazy. And quite frankly, we're very stupid. We are very stupid. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> and even in more ways than you know, they're stupid. Um, do you think that maybe it's not anything but the Trump cult? And their psychological conditioning and and um, psychological adoration of this man, uh, you know more than anybody, John, that mm. Trump was absolutely terrible with the Constitution, yeah. especially with COVID. Terrible mm. with the BLM Marxists mm -hmm. uh, Red burning flag down the laws. city. He had full <laughs> constitutional authority to take action in COVID. He didn't full constitutional authority to take action against BLM and, and Antifa. He didn't. He did nothing. He printed more money, almost as much money as Obama in eight years mm -hmm. than he did. That he almost printed in four years. Yep. So that being said. Do you think that these people are either stupid, they don't know these facts, even though they're blatant, anybody can research it within 10 seconds, or do you think that they treat it as a religion and worship this man as Christians worship Jesus Christ, these people worship Donald Trump? It's true. Okay. Do you think maybe that's the main culprit? I, you know, to break that down, you, you're going to have your zealous in any movement. You know, I did see a few in the DeSantis movement, which were kind of like, bro, you're you're condemning the Trump people for doing this. You're doing the same thing for Ron over here. You should be loyal to no politician. Instead, you should be loyal to God and the Constitution, according to your own values in terms of religion. But yes, do I think that Trump has a cult following? Yes, of course. Do Are you think it's the majority? No. no. I don't think that when I say, well, first of all, what is your what is your definition of cultist? Like how 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 exactly I, 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 well, I, I try to explain it. Okay. He completely screwed up, supported yeah. the vaccine, financed the vaccine, did nothing with BLM, nothing mm. with Antifa, nothing with the shutdowns, had mm. full power and authority to do it, did nothing about his Jan Sixers, actually called the National Guard on his own people on Jan Six, all these different things, the anti Second Amendment stuff. Okay. Um I mean, this guy was absolutely terrible on the border. Yep. We did a Pew Research thing. He was worse on the border than Obama. Yep. The, uh, my point is yeah. there's literally nothing to want any rational or just normie person just to look at basic statistics to say, hey, this guy's not a conservative. He kind of screwed up in his four-year term. I'm not going to reelect this guy. I'm going to go with somebody different. Mm -hmm. Knowing all these facts of how terrible he was, they still obviously overwhelmingly support him over everybody. Yeah. So it is, in my opinion, overwhelmingly a cult. I think it's a willful ignorance. Willful yeah. ignorance. They just it, ignore it, that. It's confirmation bias, no matter yeah. what, and it's it's, it's cognitive dissonance. It's I am going like to reject every fact and statistical piece of data that proves mm -hmm. this guy's a piece of garbage, mm -hmm. and I'm still going to support him. I mean, I, I talk to a few of my friends, and they say basically, he's like, I don't agree with a lot of Trump's done, but I just want to return to a 2016 economy. And I'm like, well, I do too. But you could have had that under DeSantis. In fact, you could have had that probably and more with DeSantis. So realistically, yeah, I, I think it's people not wanting to live. Ultimately, it goes back to the hatred of the left. I hate the left so much. I hate Joe Biden so much. I hate Nancy Pelosi so much that I'm going to go with the guy who gave them the proverbial middle finger. There were no special investigations into Hillary Clinton. 
There was nothing there. In fact, he called That's her a more abuse examples, person. Yeah. More examples. So to answer your question, I would say that, yes, I'd say it has to be a lot of it is just cognitive dissonance, voter ignorance, a not giving a damn about what your candidate is actually standing for. Now, if that quantifies them as being in a cult, then absolutely. But I do feel like there's a lot of people It's just kind of like, a lot of people wanted DeSantis, but they were like, I just don't think that he could beat Donald Trump. It's like, well, here's the deal. Vote for DeSantis in the primary if he makes it to your state. And if he loses, vote for Trump in the general. And, bro, I'm not lying to you. A lot of people are like, you can do that. It's like, do you not know how this whole thing works? And they don't. They No, they legitimately don't. And that's why, you know, I do my best to, like, on the show, we, we I've started this series of, like, a constitutional explanation. We go through the articles. We go through what everything means and the different interpretations. The people need to be educated on this process. Because if you think about it, we do this every four years. And it's, you know, it's not something that gets ingrained in people's heads. It's, it's, it's a lot different than how you wake up and you know how to go out and start your car versus the voting process, how this whole thing works. So realistically, I think ultimately what it is, is number one, it's voter ignorance. Number two, people just don't care because Americans have gotten fat. We've gotten lazy. We've gotten, you know, ripened off these these fruits of, of labor of what our forefathers gave to us. So people take things for granted now and they just don't give a shit. And when they actually, excuse me, they don't give a crap. But when they do, it'll you be can too swear. Late. Oh, okay. I was just sorry. <laughs> You're on Spreely. Speak people, freely. People don't, people don't give a shit. They, they don't care, yeah. man. And you know what? It's Liberals only care primarily when it impacts their wallets. You look at Eric Adams out in New York. Now we're suing the bus charter companies that are busing these, these illegal immigrants up to New York because New Yorkers are out there complaining and mass saying, what the hell, dude? You're costing us so much money. Businesses can't afford. Hotels are booked up. I was going to go visit my cousin in New York about a month ago. She's like, John, you're not getting a hotel in the city. She's like, It's booked. I was like, are you serious? Like, it's that bad? She goes, they're fucking everywhere. We can't afford this. Like, we cannot physically afford this. And then you, you bring in the argument of multiculturalism. You're bringing people from these other countries, these third world countries, that do not assimilate to American values. So you're going to see racist. increasing... I'm like, it's a freaking <laughs> truth. It's <laughs> increasing <laughs> crime, rape, it rapes. Dude, it's nuts. It's nuts. So that's what I love about the PC police. What they're trying to do is intentionally blind people on this, this virtue signaling platform. It's like, I just think everyone is equal, and there's no such thing as a bad nationality, a bad culture. It's like, you're full of shit. I was like, I've been around the world. I can tell you firsthand, there's some shitty cultures out there we should not be letting into America. Now, I understand well, the Well, but the problem, like, again, John, is voting has never fixed it. I know. Ever. <laughs> right. Again, I remember the last conversation we had, John. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> It's going to take more people getting up there and actually getting more actionable. Now, what you're, you, you, you know, you know why yeah. you you know why criminals or corrupt individuals get away with stuff? Weak ass DAs. <laughs> they're, they're part of the corrupt criminals. Yeah. They're part of the tie. They are the corrupt institutions, right? Mm -hmm. They get away with it. Because we let them get away with it. Want to know why? Because we're pussies and we cast a ballot. For evil to flourish. And I, for, for evil, in order, the only thing that evil needs in order to flourish is for good men to do nothing. You know who said that? Yeah, wasn't that Edmund Burke. Or Edmund Burke. Right? Edmund me. Burke. Yeah. The, so anyway, the Second Amendment was there for a reason, John. We don't have a constitution. Nobody mm. fucking follows it, not even Ron DeSantis. That's why he's got red flag laws in his state. Nobody follows the constitution. Nobody. But that wasn't DeSantis, though. That was his predecessor. But I, I he, 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 can, he can eliminate it by edict. Okay, Marbury versus yeah, Madison, 1803. Any law repugnant to the Constitution is null and void. Article 1 of the 14th Amendment. No state shall make or enforce any law that deprives life, liberty, or property uh, without due process of the law, nor can they uh, deny the rights, privileges, and immunities of the people. Mm -hmm. No state can do that. This is all illegal. These are crimes under U.S. Law Code, Title 18, Section 242. The deprivation of constitutional rights is a felony offense. Uh, Title 18, Section 241. Conspiracy to deprive constitutional rights if mm. i in just enact if i just bring up a law to be voted on if mm. i just propose a law that is conspiracy if mm. i have one other person doing it these are felony offenses nobody has done anything not one law enforcement agent has enforced the fucking law of the country article 6 section 2 the supreme law of the land the supremacy clause the constitution is the supreme law of the land article 6 section 3 <laughs> article 6 section 3 says you must take an oath every 
every government officer has to take an oath to uphold the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, which is backed up by by uh, Title V, Section 3331 of the U.S. Law Code. It is a perjury offense to violate your oath to office. These are all crimes. Not one motherfucking law <laughs> enforcement agent on the planet or in the country, I'm sorry, has enforced the fucking law. Why? Because we're all bought and paid for. All of these motherfuckers are bought and paid for, and we the people allow it to happen because we're a bunch of fucking pussies. Because we don't want to use the Second Amendment. And I, I'm going to tell you this. We all deserve it if we don't do anything. And it's going to keep getting worse because we go to the fucking ballot box and cast a fucking ballot because it requires no danger and no risk in doing that. Mm. Uh, well, I yield back to you, Joe. <laughs> well, here we go. <laughs> John, I, think, uh, I, don't, us. I don't disagree with you, but a lot of these things have to be fought through the courts. Whether we like it or not, uh, being Trump got removed from the ballot. It's like I, it's going to have to go to the, the Supreme Court, and if it goes to the Supreme Court and they say it stands, then it's on the people to go out there and basically say this is unconstitutional, this will not stand. But ultimately, it's going to have to be one of those things of what you just said. The water's going to have to be boiling hot enough to where people actually... People are complacent. When they've got food in their stomachs, they got a house, they got a roof over their head. It's like sure. that frog in the boiling water thing. You can continue to turn it up. And they're going to be fine until finally it's like, oh, shit, now it's really hot, but then it's too late. The, um, the one article I just saw of this bill, uh, Tony uh, Cowden posted about it. I don't know if you follow him. He's former Green Beret. I think he ran out of North Carolina, I think he was. He, got, he lost to Bo Hines, who was a turning point endorsed nerd. Um, it talked about essentially no longer that they want to ban assembly for training in militia style states they want to ban that yeah so, i saw that you see that one so it's kind of like i agree with what you're saying here it's gonna it's gonna come down to a point where people are actually have to arm up and it's gonna be one of these things of like this is what the people do not want because a lot of i think the, the driving force behind all this is money i think you know you talk about casting ballots the biggest question people are asking is like are the elections rigged and it's like dude i don't know i generally don't know because some people talk about the 2020 elections like was it rigged and I'm like, I'm not saying that Joe Biden got 81 million people to vote for him. I'm saying that I do think that 81, people, 81 million people voted against Donald Trump. Because when you had four years of MSM um, manipulation and propaganda, painting Trump in a certain way as far as racist, xenophobic, Democrats unite because they are very principled and driven. Whereas in Republicans, they work. They actually feed and fuel the economy. They're the truck drivers. They're the farmers. These are the blue-collar workers. So I agree with what you're saying. It's just that it's going to take something massive before people actually arm up and they start going out there and saying, this will not stand. I don't know. Sure. I don't know what it's going to be or what it's going to take. Uh, well, John, uh, as we get to the end of the show, I'm going to, take, uh, I'm going to apologize to the show after us because I'm going to take a few minutes uh, from their time. But we do at the end of the show, we do a word association game. You were with us last time when we did that. Uh, but we... we, we uh, now we're going to do something a little different. We do a, a Who Said It game where we give uh, We already got the quote. Eric one wrong, so I don't know if I want to keep playing this game. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. Is it Matty uh, here, he put the questions together. I don't know the answers to these. I don't know what he's going to give me, so I'm going to play along with this. But, he, yeah, he has no idea. But here, here we are. Okay. Spreely, Spreely TV, we're joined by the All-American Savage, John Burke. We're finishing up the show right now. We're going to do... Uh, the quote, who said it? Okay, I'm going to give you a multiple choice, okay? This is all, this is, this is not just Americans uh, everywhere. Okay, quote, if you are vaccinated, fully vaccinated, the chance of you getting seriously ill or dying from COVID is effectively zero. Fauci, Trump. Uh, hold on, hold on. Donald Trump, <laughs> Anthony <laughs> Fauci, <laughs> Ron, red, hold on, ready? A, Donald Trump, B, Anthony Fauci, C, Ron DeSantis, D, Andrew Cuomo. I thought it was all of them. I feel like all of them said it at one no, point. No, only yeah. one person. Now I have to go Fauci. Uh, Fauci. Oh, I'm Fauci. sorry. I didn't know. Ron DeSantis. He said that. Yes. Mm. Next question. Which national leader in 1933 confiscated gold from their citizens by issuing an order and said, and I quote, I do declare... That said national emergency still continues to exist, and pursuant to said section, do I do hereby prohibit the hoarding of gold coins, gold bullion, and gold certificates. Is it A, Adolf Hitler, B, FDR, C, Benicio Mussolini, or D, Joseph Stalin? What was the first go part F of that question? Which national America. leader in 1933 okay. confiscated okay. gold from the citizens by issuing an order and oh. said... 
I do declare that said national emergency still can you continues to exist and pursuant to said section do, to do hereby prohibit the hoarding of gold coin, gold bullion, and gold certificates. I'm going to go FDR. Yes, FDR. That is correct. <laughs> yeah, they were coming on oh my back God, FDR is Hitler. <laughs> FDR is Hitler. <laughs> well, no, it makes sense. They were coming out of the back end of the Great Depression. They were trying to, yeah, and that's when we got fucking Social Security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Confiscating people's gold. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And he's fired okay, up today. Uh, next. <laughs> he is, dude. He's very Who said he's this? <laughs> Quote, I believe in the idea of amnesty for those who have put down roots and lived here, even though sometimes back they may have even though sometime back they may have entered illegally. Again, I believe in the idea of amnesty for those who have put down roots and lived here, even though sometime back they may have entered illegally. Is it A. Joe Biden? B. Ronald Reagan, C. Donald Trump, or C. or D. Bill Clinton. Go on, Trump. I'm going to go with Reagan. Reagan, would you say, John? Trump. You are correct, John. It is Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. he actually I hope the Trump supporters are listening. Let, let's do one so, more, yeah. and then uh, let's let's. I want to uh, know when we can watch John on Rumble when he goes live. But oh, one more, and then, then we'll get out of here. One more. One more. Here we go. You got, you got one more. I like. Yeah, the, I, I got a couple more here. I like these. All right. <laughs> brain ticklers. Okay, here we go. Last one. In 1937, he told the Palestine Royal Commission, quote, I do not admit, for instance, that the great wrong has been done on the Red Indians of America or the black people of Australia. I do not admit that wrong has been done to these people here in Palestine by the fact that a stronger race, a high-grade race, a more worldly, worldly wise race, to put it that way, has come in and taken their place. Is it A, Adolf Hitler, B, Benicio Mussolini, C, Francisco Franco, or D, Winston Churchill? Oh, boy. I, no I, I would say, well, you, uh, you really uh, put the exclamation there on Francis, uh, Francisco Franco. C. But was it but, intentional or was that a, was that a yeah, thing? Uh, I'll, take, I'll tell you what. I'll take Winston <laughs> Churchill. When, what do you say, John? I'm going to go. I wouldn't say Winston. Oh, Hitler didn't like the Muslims either. So, <laughs> wow, John, I, I need to give you some history lessons. <laughs> no, Go no, ahead. But he didn't like anybody, so it's like for him to say that there's been no wrongdoings on like blacks. I, I don't know. I don't think it's Hitler. You say it's Hitler? And I'm saying I don't think it's Hitler. I don't. I, I, don't I, don't I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead, give it to me. Winston say. Churchill. Got it. That's what a racist! <laughs> all right, all right. Winston Churchill's Hitler. Well. Here we are. It's Brilliant TV. This is the Burn Pit Podcast. <laughs> Join us every Monday at 4 p.m. I like that. Here. That's, that makes you learn. Live here at 4 p.m. We, today we were joined by John Burke. Uh, thank you for your time today, sir. Where, oh, yeah. where, can, where can we catch the All-American Savage show? Uh, what times or, or is it? Is there a certain time of day that you uh, go live on Rumble or is it? Uh, 12 p.m. 12 p.m. Actually, um, that's, that's uh, Central? Yeah, 12 p.m. You're Texas. Texas. Yeah, You're yeah, yeah. That's why I, I'm sorry. Like I said, I was late on this. Um, do you guys have anything for tomorrow? Uh, no, we have nothing. Spot, right? Why don't you come on the show tomorrow? You want what us? time? 12 p.m. CST. So, so that'd be 1 o'clock. Uh, yeah, 1 Easter. o'clock for y'all. I'll do it. I'll do it. Let's go. It? All right, cool. It'll just be... As long as it's sport. okay with Peter. All right. Well, yeah, our producer just. We'll make sure that the uh, studio okay. that we get some studio time. But that would okay. be uh, awesome. Let's do it. Let's set it up. Um, I'll message y'all on Instagram. All it's going to be is we're going to pull up the, the most trending thing, which is the border bill. Uh, we talked about that today. But it'll be trending articles and just get your get your pieces on this. What you think about it? Weigh in on it. Yeah. That's pretty much what we do on the show. We'll so, get Maddie um, to calm down a little bit. I don't. I, I, I don't <laughs> calm I like down. Do it. Go That's how I, I roll, though, John. That's how I'm I roll. Same. I'm the same. People love me or they hate me. Oh, uh, beautiful. I don't need any more friends in my life, dude. It's like, it's, it's, <laughs> I, if my passion offends people, I don't care. It's because you feel that we need more passion in this world because people, I think we're so lackluster. We're so just me. So when you find someone that is very passionate about a very, very subject, whatever the case may be, um, it's foreign to them. They don't, they don't recognize and it intimidates and scares them. It's like, no, that motherfucker's passionate. So. I get it. Thank you, John. I appreciate I you it. not hating me. <laughs> 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 
No, well, no. thanks again. Thank you for having me, guys. It's always a pleasure. I feel like I learned something on this one. Remember, John, 1770, 1776 or 1984? Jeez, it's one and the same at this point. Well, uh, well, one, we'll one see. Provided, one provided for 1984 to happen, so it's kind of like, yeah. All right, thanks for watching us, everybody. Uh, John, we'll see you tomorrow. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking the time to watch us. If you like this episode and you'd like to watch another one, click here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.